What's up everyone? I am the Closet Catholic and you probably noticed something different today. And that's right, I'm in a different space. You don't see the bookshelves behind me or anything like that. Um, we're rearranging some stuff in the house, so I am in the basement, so don't mind all the mess behind me. Um, I'm just in a different space, that's all. <laughs> uh, and also you probably noticed the sunglasses. Uh, that's because apparently I have a blepharitis in one of my eyes. So that makes me uh, pretty photophobic lately. So like bright lights are kind of bothering me. So that's why I, I have these on. Hope you don't mind. Uh, and it's nice you can see the light boxes that I use and the reflection. You can probably see my computer screen too. So you'll see the notes that I'm using for this video. So with that said, uh, let's just go ahead and jump into what I'm going to be talking about today. So this was a topic that was requested a while back, and it's one that I've been hesitant to talk about, partly because I'm not exactly sure how to approach it. And even more so, I don't even know what to do with like a visual because, you know, usually in my videos, I have something like maybe it's slides that I'm using to just have something for you to look at besides my mug. So I couldn't figure out how to do that. Um, and even writing it out, I didn't really know what to say. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to start recording and just do this video. I have some notes I'm going off of, but nothing really in depth. And the topic is how my friends and family uh, reacted when they found out I was becoming Catholic. And that's a tough subject to cover because it's personal. I mean, for one, like it's, it's difficult to do that, um, to, to talk about something that is pretty personal like that. And also it's difficult because it's an ongoing thing. Uh, it's not like, you know, I tell them and then they respond and that's just, that's it. That's the end of the conversation. Like it, it's a constantly evolving conversation. So it's tricky to know, well, how do you even start talking about something like that? Especially when it's in the early stages as it is. Like people didn't start finding out that I was Catholic until not even a year ago. It was um, maybe eight to 10 months ago. So it's still pretty new, uh, still pretty fresh still pretty raw actually a lot of these conversations are uh, like some people we haven't continued the conversation since I first told them so it's hard to gauge that uh, not that it's bad but it's just you know it's it's still new so uh, but I'm just going to get into it uh, because I do think this is important to talk about because uh, because it is something sensitive it is something more personal and I th I think it would uh, just be beneficial for people to realize, you know, some of the difficult conversations that have to be had and, and how becoming Catholic from a Protestant position, uh, it changes things. Like, it really changes things. So overall, uh, in my experience with this, when I've told my friends and my family that I'm becoming Catholic, the response generally is pretty neutral. Uh, it sort of goes between like neutral to negative <laughs> you know uh, that's typically the response uh, not a whole lot of positive responses um, again not that they're all bad and it's not that anyone's lambasting me for becoming catholic it's just more they're not really sure how to take it so uh, one of the people i told i'll talk about a, a couple examples from my from my friends like after I really firmly started taking steps toward Catholicism and said, okay, I'm going to actually commit to this. Uh, a couple friends I talked to, one of them is a pastor and uh, we met and uh, I just, we met for a different reason. But during the conversation, I said, I told him, I says, you know, I'm, I'm actually becoming Catholic because he was asking what I was doing uh, ministry wise right now. And he says, well, actually I'm becoming Catholic. And, um, he seemed a little surprised by that, obviously. And one thing he told me that was quite, sh I don't know if I say shocking, but it was fascinating. Um, it took me by surprise was he said, you know, um, I would look into Catholicism, but I'm pretty sure I'd be convinced that it's true. And I don't want that. <laughs> um, it was an interesting response, and I appreciated the honesty of it, and and I heard where he was coming from, because, and this is something I'll, I'll probably do a separate video on, 
But when you're a pastor and you're considering Catholicism, like there's a lot at stake. And not just in terms of like employment, obviously that's a big one. Like how are you going to support your yourself and your family? If, because you're financially dependent on the fact that you're a Protestant pastor, right? Becoming Catholic kind of throws a wrench into that. But also it has a major impact on how you understand your own relationship with God. It has a major impact on how you understand your role in the kingdom, right? Like what does it mean that I'm becoming Catholic? Well, I can't be a pastor anymore. That means I'm not I can't be ordained anymore, or I'm not properly ordained in the first place, in most cases. Obviously, some Protestant traditions, like Anglicanism, um, might have valid ordinations. There's a certain process for that. Um, But for most people, like, I had to surrender my ordination credentials. The the technical term for my denomination is resigned, but the, the effect is, you know, I'm not ordained anymore. And there's a lot to process with that. Like, well, does it mean that I misunderstood when I felt called to ministry? What does ministry look like going forward, right? Like, have I just been lying to myself this whole time? Have I been lying to other people because I myself misunderstood something? So there's a lot that's at play. Um, So I appreciated the honesty there. But he was mostly neutral to receiving what I said. I think he was a little disheartened by it, too, because he had grown uh, pretty disillusioned. Uh, by certain things that have been happening within uh, the denomination. And we were both from the same denomination, too, so we were very close. And uh, he had been negatively affected by certain things, uh, leadership decisions above him that affected him negatively. And he was just he was really wrestling with even being in ministry anymore. So, so that was an interesting conversation a pretty sad conversation because uh it was just a rough time you know in both of our lives at that point but uh, anyways but he wasn't it wasn't negative or anything he didn't talk bad about catholics i just thought it was fascinating that his response was uh, essentially just yeah i'd probably become catholic too but i don't want to become catholic so i'm not gonna look into it and i'm not saying that in a mocking way i'm like that's how he responded so, and again, I'll probably talk a little bit more about that in a separate video because I do think there's a lot there to, to look into. Um, but that's one example. Uh, the last example from a friend of mine, these are all males, by the way. I didn't plan that. It's just how it is. Was uh, a pastor that I worked pretty closely with for a while. And um, he was also one of the first people who found out because my becoming Catholic did actually affect my working relationship with this person. So I had to let them know. And they were, they were open to it. I mean, they weren't upset about it. They were actually pretty supportive, you know, making sure and following up like, hey, have you found a, a good church? Like, how are you doing? Um, so there's nothing negative on that part. Um, it was hard to tell exactly where he was coming from, though, because after I told him that, like he... On separate occasions, he actually offered me a paid position within his church uh, as an associate pastor. And then he also said, hey, there's a church in the area that needs an interim pastor. Why don't you consider that? And then a a conversation after that was, hey, have you considered being a hospital chaplain? Um, So I couldn't tell if some of that was just him just being supportive and wanted to make sure I was taken care of by having some kind of employment somewhere or how much of it was he just actually just wanted me to stay Protestant. (laughs) So he just was trying to find a position for me to fill that required me to be ordained (laughs) as a Protestant pastor. I don't know. Um, But I'm not going to assume anything negative with that. That was just, you know, different, different dynamics at play that, um, but I mean, overall, like it was nothing negative. Um, You know, he never told me like, Oh, I think this is a mistake. Uh, Nothing like that. And I sort of walked him through, you know, like, well, this is why, Um, And this is also not why I'm doing it. And I'll get into some of that in a minute. Um, So overall, like my friends have been fairly uh, neutral, supportive. No one, no one's been negative about it, right? No one's tried to get me to, you know, recommit my life to Christ because they think I'm going to hell for becoming Catholic or something like that. Like I'm I'm surrendering my salvation or, or anything. So I remember the first time I told family members, uh, I had some people over and uh, we went to church 
together. It was at a Protestant church because I hadn't really started RCIA at this point. So this was um, a little less than a year ago. And I remember I told them, hey, just wanted to let you guys know, like I'm uh, I'm considering becoming Catholic. Is I believe that's how I worded it. And their first response, uh, one from just said, no. <laughs> Uh, which I appreciated the honesty. Um, the other one was a bit more uh, cautious, curious. Like, well, why? <laughs> why would you want to do that? Um, and, you know, I understood where they were coming from. So, uh, but over time, as like I've mentioned it to other family members or other family members have found out through the grapevine, because you know how that works. Um, the response is generally neutral but tending to betray an anti-Catholic bias. And I'm not saying that as a form of slander. Um, like, they've admitted that to me. Like, in conversations and as they develop, they've said to me, uh, like, this is difficult to talk about because growing up, you know, this is their words, uh, growing up, we just always heard negative things about Catholicism. So I'm not sure how to process this. Like, I don't, I don't know how uh, to, like, work through this. Um, which, again, I appreciate the honesty um, but it does make navigating these conversations with family a bit difficult because uh, overall they're at such a different place with the conversation, which, which is totally fine. Like, I, I get it. Like, I grew up Protestant. They grew up Protestant. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be in that situation where you just don't really have a frame of reference for Catholicism. And then you find out a family member that you're close with is becoming Catholic and you're like, what do I do with that? Like, where do I even start to process it? Which is partly why, and this was something else a family member told me, which is partly why no one in my family seems to want to talk about it. Um, which is tough, you know, because whenever we got together as a family, whether, you know, large family gathering, holidays, or even just a few of us getting together on a weekend, uh, we always talked about church stuff. You know, well, what's going on at church? Uh, and not just because I'm a pastor, but because that's always been interesting to us. We've always been involved in the church. We were always uh, closely connected to the conversations that were happening, to different issues that were being raised. Um, uh, even like at like the upper denominational level, like the highest leadership, uh, because uh, within my family, I've had... Uh, a relative, late relative, who served as a, it's a position similar to a bishop, right? And I currently have another family member who's in a similar position as well. So, like, you know, we're involved. <laughs> like, we're, we're pretty well connected uh, as a family to uh, our denomination. And so we, we'd have those conversations. We talk about theology. We talk about spiritual things, like, all the time. And now, like, it's, it's difficult because we get together as a family, and it's like no one wants to talk about that stuff anymore and it's it's difficult i don't know if it's because well i don't want to speculate but i just want to say it's sad like that's a sad effect of me talking about becoming catholic is i feel like we we just can't talk about church at all anymore um and the only time it does come up it seems like there's a lot of reservations to sharing much uh, which is tough for a couple of reasons. One is because like this is the most one of the most significant things that's happening in my life right now, and I want to talk about it with people, but my family is, doesn't seem interested in talking about it. And it's tough because that's something that my family's always talked about, and now we don't. And um, but it's not because they're just against it. I do think there is some of that and the and they'll admit that to me. Like they'll admit like yeah, we don't really like this that this is happening, but they'll also admit that they don't want to talk about it because they they just don't know how to talk about it. They really don't. So I had a conversation with a family member after a large after a holiday thing, so we had a lot of family there and afterwards uh, I just confided in, in this person and I said, you know, um, is there a reason why like no one brought up 
the fact that I'm becoming Catholic. Like, I figured that would be, like, a main subject that we'd want to talk about because, like, that was a big thing for the year, but it never came up, which I thought was really strange. And they said, you know, I don't think it's because people don't want to talk about it. It's because we don't know what to say. And I says, well, you know, you could always just ask me questions. Like, I'm okay with questions. And they says, but that's the thing. We don't even know what questions to ask. And as that conversation developed, it was obvious to me that um, that even like other close family members, uh, they they really don't. They don't know what to say. They they don't know. They they don't even know enough about Catholicism to even know how to initiate a conversation about it, to know what sort of questions to ask for me, who's becoming Catholic, um, outside of why are you becoming Catholic? And then I, you know, and they did ask me that question. Like when I first told them, they would ask me, oh, why are you becoming Catholic? And at first I was pretty gun shy about that because I didn't know how to articulate it, which is partly the reason why I started this channel was so that I could have a place where I could distill like my main reasons for becoming Catholic into an easily understandable and digestible format. Because before, like I tried writing stuff and I would, I had like a document going and it was like 20 pages and I was like, this is too much. And it's all over the place. Like I need to distill my thoughts down to something that's a little easier and more accessible. So when they first asked me, why am I becoming Catholic? It was tough to answer that because I was still form like I knew it was I knew I had good reasons I knew I had thought this through but my thoughts weren't organized and so I think that also framed some of the conversation between myself and my family and some of the perception of like on their end like maybe they were assuming I was becoming Catholic for illegitimate reasons because I couldn't articulate my reasons very well but even after I did articulate my reasons it it was clear that there was still that gap between what they had grown up assuming about Catholicism and me trying to explain, well, this thing about Catholicism is what's attractive to me, and, and this is why I'm being drawn to Catholicism. And there's just too much of a, a knowledge gap between the two. And I feel like that is something that comes up fairly frequently whenever this topic is discussed among my family members. And, and I get it. You know, I get it. I remember when I was a Protestant and people would talk about Catholicism and, and I had no frame of reference for it. Something about Eucharists and uh, very ornate churches. Something about incense here and there. Um it was pretty basic, you know, and I grew up around a very anti-Catholic culture and I'm thankful that I didn't become anti-Catholic throughout my life. I was mostly just neutral. I just didn't know enough to say one way or the other. And I feel like that's where a lot of my family members are, um, which again, they've admitted to me. Um, and they've even admitted, uh, anti-Catholic bias. So, um, I do feel that at least for right now, that's where a lot of my family is, is trying to reconcile, the presupposition, uh, the assumption that they have, that they've been taught, that well, Catholics are bad, Catholicism is bad, at least. Maybe not all Catholics are bad, but, but Catholicism is bad, along with, but we also have this family member who's becoming Catholic, and we know that they're not stupid, <laughs> which I appreciate. Um, so how do you reconcile those two, right? Because that's the thing, like, my family knows me. They know that I would never make a decision like this unless I had seriously thought through it, unless I had very good reasons for doing it. And even in explaining the reasons, the reasons themselves don't really land. Again, because of just the, the discrepancy of perspective, right? So if I talk about the importance of the Eucharist and uh, just the nature of worship, this might sound negative, but a lot of my family members, like, they don't have a frame of reference for that. It's like, well, it doesn't matter. Like, that's not important from the Protestant perspective. Um, so so that sort of stuff is, is tricky. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, the timing of when I told them, I think, has colored the conversation in a particular way. So, and I mean, it's just weird. 
right? Life is weird. So um, about a year ago, shortly before I started telling people I was becoming Catholic, I had a falling out with my church leadership. I mean, it, it was a mess, essentially. And the way that I was treated, the way that my family was treated was incredibly disrespectful and uh, was very hurtful. And as a direct result of that, um, I no longer had a ministry position. It was, it was pretty messed up, to be honest. Now, I've forgiven them. I pray for them. Um, I've, you know, moved on from it. But it is a it is a factor in my story because after that point, it's like, okay, well, what reason do I have to remain Protestant when I don't even have a ministry position anymore? So, so I'll just openly pursue Catholicism. Like I didn't have anything holding me back at that point. Um, as far as my position as a pastor was concerned. Uh, and so shortly after that happened and I told my family about it, it, it was obvious that the way that even though I gave my reasons for why I'm becoming Catholic, they saw my becoming Catholic is just me reacting to something bad that had happened to me. And this came up in several conversations where, uh, like, they would say, uh, well, you know, just because something bad happened to you in the church doesn't mean you have to leave the denomination. And I would say, that's not why. Like, that's not why I'm becoming Catholic. Is It's not because of that. And I explicitly said that in several occasions. But it seemed like there was still that that idea that, well, he's just doing this because he had a bad experience with church leadership. Now, I've known several people who that is their reason. They don't like how they're treated by church leadership, so they jump ship and go somewhere else, right? I know that that is a story a lot of people have, but that's not my story. So it was frustrating for a while because it was obvious that was a perception of why I was converting. And I don't know if part of that is because that seems like a more understandable position to have rather than having to wrestle with my actual reasons for converting right so instead of wrestling with the the deuterocanon or uh, the history of the theological traditions that we hold and are they actually consistent with what the early church held and well what's the best form of christianity that is consistent with the early church right instead of wrestling with those things it's easier I think to just say, well, he's doing this because he had a bad experience. So, and that's, again, that's not a negative thing. That's just sort of an ongoing conversation. So there is something I want to touch on here. And that is when I talk to friends and family and I offer them the reasons of why I'm becoming Catholic, because that's what they ask. There's a big difference between expecting me to just give the reasons for why I'm becoming Catholic and expecting me to justify the reasons I'm becoming Catholic. And more often than not, the way the conversation goes, it's they're asking me to justify my reasons. And I don't begrudge that, but it is a reality that I've had to face. And it's one that I've had to prepare for. And that's where Catholic apologetics really comes into play. Because, again, I could sit here and I could list out, all right, these are the reasons I'm becoming Catholic there it is. But it's a totally different conversation to have when people ask me what my reasons are, and then they follow, follow that up with the expectation, okay, now I need you to justify those reasons. Like, why are those reasons important? Why should I accept your reasoning? And I don't think it's intentional that this happens, but it does happen. Uh, so yeah, so that's me sharing how my friends and family responded to my becoming Catholic. Though I would also add just one last thing. A lot of people still don't know, um, which is partly why I'm a closet Catholic. Uh, and there are certain reasons for that, um, which I might get into in a different video. It's nothing negative. It's not that I'm ashamed or anything. It's it just a lot of it has to do with like a timing issue and just politics. It's complicated, um, but I have good reason for it anyways. But all right, so that's going to do it for now. Um, I should have some other videos coming up at some point in the future. I do want to take a look. This has been on my mind. There is a video I want to do where I kind of examine a YouTube video, and it's actually the YouTube video that uh, cemented my journey into Catholicism. Um, so I'm th thinking of doing, of maybe taking a look at that, and uh, I think that would be fun. But we'll see. Uh, but regardless, that's it for this time this video 
uh thanks for watching guys i appreciate it thank you so much for your support and for people who comment whether you are catholic or protestant i i appreciate all the comments you guys have been awesome and i will see you around the tiber